Hi, gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. This is the first of a series of the topics concerning the gay issue in the Bible, as there's 14 verses that you or many people have used to condemn gays. And this started some 700 years ago. I know a lot of you would say that that the Bible is much older than that. But again, look at me. I'm, I'm saying this started 700 years ago with a, a few powerful Catholic leaders that wanted to purge people in high positions that doesn't have the same ideals as they. So they created, invented, if you will, a doctrine. And it's an anti-gay doctrine they went into the Bible and they found verses that somehow looked like male-to-male -male sex and they incorporated these then put a story to them, a, a way of teaching them to present gays as sin. And this way they can create scandal and point fingers at some leader and they will get him impeached. Now they basically got 12 of the 14 verses together back in those days and about a hundred years after they been teaching this and, and making sure the regular Catholic person begins to believe that gay is sin based on this new doctrine that the Catholic Church invented. A hundred years later the um, Protestants adopted this and then then uh, you know they came to America the Puritans of the strictest order basically hated generally by most Christians and they came to America for this religious freedom that they sought without persecution from other Christians we are not told very much when we're listening to our pastor preach or other means that mostly Christians hated these Christians and that's why they came to America so they can have freedom to preach or believe in what they believe and they brought with them a most heinous version of this anti-gay doctrine. Now it took to 1850 before a clergy convention got together in the USA to produce a a version of First Corinthians 6 9 because it was pre, uh, taught up to then as something entirely different as what it is taught today. They were teaching it that masturbators will not inherit the kingdom of God. As blunt as that sound, that is exactly what this verse was believed to be basically generally in the United States. At this annual convention the clergy decided that everybody's doing this so heaven would be empty and so they decided together to find another group well already 12 verses were against gays so basically Christians believed gay was sin and so uh, they said why not put gays in here and so they did and from that time forward they taught gays won't inherit the kingdom of God. It's kind of interesting now you could just manipulate the word of God however you want. This particular verse also has been taught in various ways and not really anything to do with gays, at least ordinary gays. Now, in 1850 it was a step further as modern versions began to come out, or I mean 1946, they actually took the two Greek words for sodomite and catamite out of the Bible and inserted the word homosexual. So with the beginnings of the modern translations you have the word homosexual now in the Bible as they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So we have all of this kind of stuff going on so we have lots of information that you can look at to find out if these 14 verses actually condemn gay people. Now, the first verse 
in the Bible that is used to condemn gays is the story about God created Adam and Eve and the mockingness that people that think gay is sin say is he didn't create Adam and Steve. Well there's a lot to the garden and things that happen. One of the significant things and it's repeated in in the New Testament is the reason to leave mother and father the only reason that God gives is to get married. Well who knows what they did all through the past. Well we know that generally mother and father joined up with another mother and father and they decided almost at your birth who you're gonna marry and what benefits they can have this is generally the way marriage was marriage is a thing of evolution you know uh, it evolved from Adam and Eve to today and it's still in an evolving state and generally a lot of it has nothing to do with sin or not it's just generally the e evolution of marriage and the Bible is not very distinctive on what the rules should be basically in it. Uh, you are the one that is deciding what the rules are, right or wrong, for whatever your motives are, evil or good. And so there's lots of things you're supposed to, what you do in reality is actually go out to the world for a career, for fun and pleasure, for everything except marriage. And if you do anything related to marriage, it's just to enjoy the dating process and the benefits you get for dating. Then later on you will settle down. There's lots of people out there that are preaching about how you, the first person, you're not, you shouldn't have sex and all this until you're married. And maybe these few people out here, not too many, actually never did have sex before marriage and 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 usually their testimony shows they got married to the first person they ever knew and so they never had any opportunities like the rest of us who didn't get married to the first person that we met you dated and then that didn't work out and you dated some more and so forth but anyway the garden has a lots of information and when God created Adam and then he uh, made Eve out of Adam, there's a word there. Generally, we just read it as rib. God took a rib out of Adam. Well, this rib, as a matter of fact, in Hebrew, there's a couple of words for rib in the Bible. And, and one of the words is something that could be used for an ordinary rib. It could be wood, a rib in a boat or something, or it could be a bone in the body. So in the sentence that it was used in, if it was used in Adam made uh, Eve out of the rib, of, I mean God made Eve out of the rib of Adam, you would be able to say it's a real rib. But that's not the rib that the Hebrew used. The Hebrew word for rib turns out to be cell if we use the best English today and a cell is something that has the DNA and genes and chromosomes. in other words Steve was in the DNA after all now I only got 10 minutes here to, to, to speak on this but you know there's a lot to happen and you can't just simply say God created Adam and Eve therefore gay is sin but I'd like to ask those of you who don't know Jesus Turn to him right now and say, Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God and that God created you on the third day. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life. A simple prayer gets you saved. Now read the King James Version, not any other modern translations. If you want to read a modern translation, go search and look up Westcott and Hort. Then you'll be able to read modern translations with, your, with some information behind you. See you now.